Morning, and here's some breaking news uh, on transportation during the Industrial Revolution. Today we're going to talk about it in two separate parts. One, the Erie Canal, and two, the National Road System. So, what we're talking about is, here is the United States in 1810, and we had a big problem. The majority of people lived on the coast. The manufacturing was in one spot. We had the Mississippi River, but we had a lot of people that were starting to settle in places like Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee. So the question is, how do we get goods and products to them? If you're a factory owner, you want to be able to sell to those people. If you have resources, you want to be able to get them out. And the answer, transportation. First, a canal. And the canals or the canal that they came up with was the idea of the Erie Canal. They wanted to be able to connect New York City along the Hudson River, build a canal that would connect, allow shipping on the Great Lakes and the shipping of products to places like Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, and so on. Together, they needed to match up the uh, the manufacturing of the Northeast, as you see here on this map, this region all in red is where the majority of people working in factories are. States like New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, uh, even parts of Ohio and Massachusetts. As we get further south, we see less and less. So the question is, how do we connect them? And the way we're going to connect them is through a canal. And here's how a canal works. A canal connects two bodies of water that may have different water levels. Ships traveling through the canal move from one water level to another through a lock a rectangular chamber with watertight gates at each end. In the lock, the level of water can be raised and lowered by a system of valves and water passages. Suppose a ship is traveling from the higher water level to the lower. First, an operator at a nearby station opens the lock gates at the high end. The ship enters the lock, and the lock gates are closed. Next, the lock operator opens one or more valves so that water from the lock slowly drains into the lower section of the canal. When the water in the lock is level with the lower water, the operator opens the gates and the ship sails through. To move a ship upstream, the procedure is reversed. So, what we have is a system which allows lower water, perhaps the sea or the Great Lakes, to be balanced out through this series of canals and locks. And it allowed huge amounts of uh, goods to be brought from New York City out to the Great Lakes and from the Great Lakes to New York City. And what we see as a huge result is the growth of cities. New York City most definitely grows and becomes our biggest city. Any of the cities along this canal route become extremely important as places that aren't right on the canal become great places to bring your goods to. So certainly Syracuse and Buffalo, which is right on Lake Erie, uh, Albany, uh, Syracuse become extremely, extremely important. And we see this all throughout as with the success of the Erie Canal, we see the development of other canals. And as you're looking here, what this map shows is a number of other canals. Perhaps most important for our region, the Delaware and Raritan, the Schuylkill, and the Philadelphia. The canals allowed the nation to transport goods all over. I'm about to run out of time in the first video. We're going to discuss and kind of see if there are any additional questions. Thanks for watching.